And you know, it really bugs me that CenturyLink does not connect people up with the six billion dollars that they get to do so. I'm done. I'm not making any more political videos on this channel. So, you're gonna have to get your commentary somewhere else with less big rigs. Gentlemen, let us toast the victory of the incumbent internet service providers for the past decade or so against people who just want internet that doesn't suck in the wealthiest nation in the world. The United States of, well, crappy internet. CenturyLink gets $500 million per year for approximately 12 years, which totals $6 billion. Where does that money go? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It doesn't go to the guy down the road here in sort of rural America who needs broadband access and can't get it. But I know someplace it does go. Oh, you want to know where it goes? I'll tell you. Down the road, some guy gets connected up with fiber access through a company called Randolph Telephone. Randolph Telephone is a small local internet service provider. Do you know what CenturyLink does with their 500 million a year from the federal government? You know, the 500 million a year they get to connect up people who don't have service. When Randolph Telephone goes into an area, CenturyLink then goes into the same area to offer service. They don't spend the money to do new hookups for people who are out in the middle of nowhere. They spend the money to compete with people who have already connected up the people that CenturyLink won't connect up. That's where your money's going. 500 million of it a year. Sounds great, right? What a good deal. But the federal government does nothing. They are not held accountable. So, cheers CenturyLink. You bent us all over and stuck it in without any lube. Thanks a lot for that. We really love your service out here. Oh wait, half of us can't even get it, so we get to live the poor life, disconnected from civilization. So you live in a rural area, and you want to get on the internet so that you can go to an online university and get some kind of degree, advance your prospects in the economy. Well, you know, you need internet for that. You need broadband internet to go to internet universities. You want to go to Western Governors? Strayer, Capella, guess what? None of those universities work if you don't have good internet access to do the classes with. And that's where we are today. People who live in poor rural areas tend to stay poor. Part of that is because they don't have access to the internet. Or they don't have good access to the internet. They might have dial-up, satellite, extremely sketchy cell phone service that barely works and sometimes doesn't if it rains. You can't be a part of the digital economy if you don't have connections to the digital economy at all. Do you know how hard it is to order on Amazon through dial-up? Do you know how hard it is to do research whenever you have to wait minutes for a modern bloated web page to load? It sucks. And you know, it really bugs me that CenturyLink does not connect people up with the six billion dollars that they get to do so. But that's fine. That's cool. You know, uh, we in the state of North Carolina, we will do it ourselves. We'll get the town to do it. We'll get the town to provide internet. We'll all get together as taxpayers and say, we would like to pay a tiny sliver more on our property taxes and our vehicle taxes and other taxes so that everyone in town can have really great access to high-speed broadband internet. But that's illegal! It's true. The ISPs got together and banned municipal broadband service in North Carolina in the mid-2000s. It's been illegal for anyone who has a city or county to spend any taxpayer dollars at all on providing internet services to the citizens of that county. Thanks to CenturyLink, Time Warner, which is now part of Spectrum, 
at all. All these big ISPs got together to make sure that in North Carolina, taxpayer dollars couldn't compete with them. Now they complain that taxpayer dollars is unfair competition because how can these private companies compete with the public tax base? But isn't that 500 million a year that CenturyLink is getting to connect up rural people? Oh, isn't that taxpayer dollars? Wow, taxpayer dollars being given to a large internet service provider to provide internet service to people who don't have it. The government is literally paying for new customers to be hooked up, effectively free of charge for the company, and they're still not doing it. They're just taking the money and walking away and going, oh, that's fine. But then they ban municipal broadband across the state. And it's not just North Carolina. Several other states have municipal broadband either neutered or severely restricted. So there you go. So let me get this straight. CenturyLink is being paid taxpayer dollars but they say taxpayer dollars are unfair for them to have to compete with. So they got all of the towns and counties to be unable to give their citizens internet while they get paid to give the same citizens internet and they don't give the citizens internet and nobody does anything about it? Yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. Really great, America. What is needed is for local municipalities and counties to band together and tell the legislature unanimously and loudly, we want the North Carolina municipal broadband law repealed. We don't care that the moneyed interests don't want it repealed. We want to give our citizens access to the internet, something that directly correlates with success in the digital economy. Will that happen? I have no way of knowing, but after watching this video, I encourage you to do your part to try and make that happen. Contact your legislator and let them know that you want it repealed. Put together organizations in your town or city or county, your rural area, municipality, whatever you want to call it, that call for this to be handled. This is unfair and it's abusive to the citizens to take their money and give them nothing in return that you promised you would, and then have it banned for other people to do what you yourself were supposed to with money that was already given to you. Don't stand for it! I'm Jody Bruchon and I approve this message. I'm out of coffee, video's over.